Hi everyone, this is Sean Chua from SimpleChemConcepts.com Welcome back Now, in the previous video, I have discussed on the reactivity series of metals and look into a strategy, a technique whereby I can use to so-called remember a list of common metals in terms of their reactivity in descending order All right. Now, if you'd like to receive more chemistry videos uh, from us do subscribe to our channel by clicking the button below Okay. Now, without further ado, we get back into the reactivity series uh, of metals which is very useful in order to so-called predict the chemical properties of metals in our everyday lives Okay, so um, you probably recall via my previous video on the reactivity series that the list of metals are arranged in that order of the reactivity series because of the uh, reaction with water, steam, and hydrochloric acid. And scientists have done experiments after experiments uh, and consolidated those results in order to give you that list. So without further ado, let me uh, discuss with you how these reactions are uh, represented in terms of chemical equations, okay? So here we go. This is reaction of metals with water and dilute acid. So this is the metals uh, in the reactivity series potassium all the way to gold in this column is a reaction with steam or water and in this column it will be reaction with dilute acid I'm going to start with this column first because it's easier we learned this uh, in the topic of acids much earlier whereby acids reacts with most metals gives you ionic salt and hydrogen gas so let's take a look at the first three metals we know that they are highly reactive metals and they tend to have vigorous reaction when they react with dilute acids first two, potassium sodium, they are group 1 metals they are known as alkaline metals they are highly reactive so they tend to explode when you add acid to it All right? when they meet each other, there will be an explosion too vigorous, right? too reactive and calcium, the third most reactive metals in the series tend to have a violent reaction with dilute acids All right? now from magnesium all the way to lead magnesium to lead as you can see over here they will react with acid and they will form your ionic salt and hydrogen gas so all in all potassium to magnesium they will all react with your dilute acids to form ionic salt and hydrogen gas with the first three being very reactive okay? and then for copper, silver and gold all right, these three metals are considered unreactive metals because they do not react with your dilute acids to form salt and hydrogen gas there's no reaction at all so that's all about uh, dilute acid with metals let's then take our attention um, into this reaction with water or steam now the first three metals in the reactive series are highly reactive once again they will react with your cold water which is basically the water in uh, your chemistry laboratory you know, and when they react, they will form alkaline solution and hydrogen gas. So let me give you the equation. Right? This should be two sodium uh, reacts with your water. I believe this is two water and uh, form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Equations should be balanced and with state symbols. All right. So sodium metal react with your liquid water, which is uh, your cold water, re gives you sodium hydroxide alkaline solution and hydrogen gas. Let me check whether this uh, balance equation is correct. So sodium there are two, and then oxygen there are two atoms, hydrogen four, hydrogen two plus two four. Now, how come I can write this so far just now? Is because I purposely go and remember what I call the four digit number for this balance equation, which is two 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 one. Why do I? try to remember this why do you remember that? because this equation is highly or probably you can say it's commonly tested in chemistry exam I always see them in chemistry exam uh, whether it's O-level pure chemistry or IP chemistry or other equivalent syllabus All right? so you might want to take note very fast Okay. so this will be the same for potassium and calcium so here you go what about magnesium? the reactivity becomes uh, drops, right? it decreases over here magnesium not so reactive anymore so they tend to have slow reaction with uh, the cold water Okay, slow reaction with cold water so um, let me write the arrow here 
because I need some space. So magnesium reacts with your cold water. It will form magnesium hydroxide, which is sparingly soluble. All right, not very soluble. Basically, this uh, alkaline solution and hydrogen gas. Let's check whether this balance. I believe you need a two over here, and this is balanced. Okay. Now, what else? All right. So magnesium is slow reaction cold water. What else? So from aluminium to tin, these four metals will not react with cold water. There's no reaction at all. Instead, they will react with steam. They are hot metal. If the metal are heated up and you pass steam through it, um, it will react. All right. And when they react, they will still form hydrogen gas. But instead of alkaline solution, they form your metal oxide. So give, let me give you an example. So um, perhaps you can use this zinc, all right? Zinc reacts with H2O gaseous state. So this is a steam, and they form zinc oxide and hydrogen gas. I believe this equation uh, is balanced, right? So this is uh, how you show the reaction of uh, zinc with steam, all right? Now. What about lead to go? Uh, from lead all the way to go, they have no reaction with both cold water as well as steam. Even the harsher condition, um, steam, all right? Uh, H2O in the vapor phase will also not react with it. All right? So this is reaction with water and steam. I have two quick mention over here. Um, first is back to magnesium. Because they have slow reaction with cold water, so I saw from exam papers, examination papers, that a lot of times when you are asked to write an equation for magnesium, they will not ask you the reaction with cold water. Instead, they will ask you the reaction with steam. Because steam is harsh, all right? it will react with magnesium a lot more faster than with your cold water. So let me give you an equation. So magnesium will react with your steam to give you magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. Once again, always make sure that it is balanced. All right, so this is uh, one of the mention. I have another special mention over here. Um, it will be iron, all right? Let me put three asteroids over here, just to let you know. Now, iron, we react with steam, yes. And when they react with steam, you will uh, believe that they will form iron uh, oxide. Iron exists commonly as uh, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions. So the oxide that you probably be uh, thinking of is FeO or Fe2O3. However, iron when it reacts with your uh, steam, it doesn't form FeO and Fe2O3. Instead, it forms Fe3O4. All right, let me show you. So I'm going to bring it over here. There's some space once again. Example iron, when you react with your steam, all right, you form Fe3O4, which you seldom see this oxide, all right, uh, in most of the topics in your chemistry syllabus. Uh, and you'll get your hydrogen. Yes. So you need to balance it and then uh, I kind of remember it because once again it comes up I need to be very fast uh, else you can slowly balance it. I believe the, it should be 3, 4, 1, 4, right? Iron there are 3, so I believe there is a 3, 4, 1, 4. So do a quick check, alright? 4 oxygen which is here and then 8 hydrogen, 8 hydrogen, 3 uh, iron metal. Looks good. This is the balance equation. When iron react with your steam. Okay, special mention, do take note of it. Now, we are almost done with it, uh, except that uh, I want to include something else over here, uh, is to share with you that um, when the metals react with your water or, or steam, it is a redox reaction, all right? So once again, if you have missed out my videos uh, on redox reactions, do go to my channel and look out for it, all right? Um, beautiful videos, and I think you're going to learn a lot from those 
uh, redox reactions videos. All right. Uh, so from here, I will just um, give an example using oxidation state. All right. So let me use probably this one because there's some space here. Let's squeeze in. All right. Iron, or rather, sorry, zinc has an oxidation state of zero. All right. Where zinc over here oxidation state of plus two. So what it means is uh, your zinc has been what we call oxidized, short form, right? Square bracket O, uh, it has been oxidized. Now, then if you look at hydrogen, it has an oxidation state of plus one in steam, and it has an oxidation state of zero in hydrogen. So there's a decrease in the oxidation state from here to here, so this is reduction. And when both oxidation and reduction occurs simultaneously, occurs together, we say that that chemical reaction is basically a redox reaction. Okay? So think of that. Because they, in the exam, they like to ask uh, redox questions uh, in, uh, in metals. All right? So once again, um, I hope you enjoyed my video. And I look forward to meeting you again in the next video. Take care and goodbye.